Hello friends. Last week in my video, we saw whether banking was likely to keep boosting the markets like it has been in the past. And very well, the uh, uh, banking and financial sector stocks continued to basically play John Rambo, as I wrote in my live mint column. This is India's first and only media column to offer statistical uh, uh, analysis to its readers. In the past, a couple of weeks ago, I had recorded a video basically uh, on the subject of whether elections are likely to dampen the rally. At that point in time, I had said elections were not making a material difference to sentiments. But now we have about a week to go before the elections kick off in the first phase. So are elections likely to uh, uh, basically spook, worry or scare the uh, average uh, bull who on uh, the last street is has been buying uh, uh, stocks uh, fairly relentlessly, fairly confidently. I think the answer is a little more complex than just a yes or no. Now, allow me to offer you my two bits because I've seen these markets uh, since uh, 1986. They have evolved and they've changed from uh, uh, the public outcry system to the uh, 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 order-driven system online. But one thing that have, hasn't changed is the basic underlying behavioral financial psychology under it. Now, what happens normally in times of elections is that governments come out and support markets. This is not India specific. This is not political. This is not pro this or anti this. This is a global phenomena. This happens worldwide. If you Google search, there is actually something called the U.S. presidential election cycle. The uh, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, government deliberately makes efforts to boost the markets by uh, giving a feel good factor slew of announcements. Inflation is brought down. Oil at uh, the pump level is attempted to brought down. The dollar is strengthened. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, employment figures are basically massaged. I had said this in my two videos, A, on interest rates, B, on uh, bullion as to whether a uh, bullion uh, will rise further from here. I had said economic data will be massaged in 2024 across all the five dozen countries that have general elections this year. So will elections dampen the spirits? I think not. Elections by themselves might actually see governments across the world boosting markets. What will dampen the spirits are data on the elections coming out, which are contrary to a public expectation and b spring any kind of a surprise. So it will be a time of high volatility as people conjecture, people second guess, people guess. People try to uh, uh, kind of involve their emotions into their decision making process, but elections by themselves may not. It is the data coming out on the elections that will impact the prices. And this government, just like the government prior to it. So I'm talking of NDA government and prior to this was the UPA government. The NDA government is fairly capable of uh, uh, damage control by way of boosting the markets whenever there is any uh, time of uh, uh, nervousness uh, on the political front. So I think um, uh, the elections themselves by themselves may not have an impact. It's the exit polls. It's the it's the data that comes out that might impact. That said, let's now move ahead to our usual format of the video. Wherein uh, coming up on your screen is uh, the weekly uh, roundup and uh, it tells you that uh, uh, the nifty spot managed to uh, uh, gain 0.03% whereas the bank nifty gained more than the nifty 50. Note how the banking stocks are basically outperforming the broader markets and nothing happens in the financial markets without a reason and the reason itself is always financial. Now, why does it happen on your uh, uh, inset box on your screen? You're basically seeing that over a four week period, the bank Nifty has outperformed the Nifty 50's return. On a 12 week period now, the bank Nifty is outperforming the Nifty 50. It's only over a 20 week period. You're seeing that the bank Nifty is underperforming the Nifty 50. And the reason is fairly simple. 
33.53% weightage in the Nifty is of banking and financial sector stocks. You cannot push the Nifty higher unless banking and financial sector stocks participate, period. It's as simple as that. So are you really surprised that HDFC Bank and other banking stocks are going up? Because without these stocks, the Nifty cannot rally. Moving ahead, the US dollar index jumped to a, a 106.01. And in spite of that, you basically saw the uh, gold and silver prices jump because uh, safe haven buying started here. I have recorded a video specifically for uh, uh, this purpose itself as to why gold and silver will continue to rise, why interest rate may just rise instead of fall. Please do watch these two videos. The hyperlink to these videos are in the description and in the pinned comment below. Crude and natural gas fell, not really surprising because uh, the dollar was firm and uh, the threat of Iranian attacks on Israel uh, uh, were basically uh, seen pushing markets higher initially, but towards the end of the week, there was profit taking seen on these markets. The USD INR, which is the United States dollar versus the rupee, rose 15 bips and uh, that's not really surprising because the Dixie, the US dollar index has risen across the global basket of currencies. The NSE market capitalization went up by 0.08%, which means the rally was broad based, but it was just about a gaining uh, uh, trigger. MWPL jumped smartly at 38.43%, uh, and uh, uh, the US market headline indices fell in unison, providing headwinds to our domestic markets. Friends, I now come to our in-house uh, indicator, starting with the MWPL or market-wide position limits. Now, these are limits utilized by traders as compared to the overall uh, limits allowed by SEBI. And uh, uh, on this will depend the span margins, volatility and concentration margins of your individual stock futures. So MWPL after a slow and sluggish start went up smartly and ended the week at 38.43%, thereby going above uh, the previous week's, uh, previous uh, month or uh, commensurate week of the previous monthly expiry. And uh, it showed that uh, uh, smart money was basically buying in big ticket lots. Now this has to continue, follow up buying has to come in. So ideally speaking, Prices and MWPL should rise together to indicate that follow-up buying is coming. Now, friends, the index and stock futures turnover over a 20-week period. This is a weekly chart and uh, 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 what you're seeing is uh, uh, cumulative figures for three consecutive expiries. So it is April, May and June. Turnover in both the index futures and stock futures has fallen. Now, I've been telling you, I posted on my social media account uh, uh, that uh, turnover in the future segment has fallen, whereas the FNO turnover that you're seeing as rising is actually coming in from the lower risk options segment. Now, falling turnover in the futures tells you that high risk buying is not happening or it's happening, but at very, very small uh, uh, quantities. So I would want uh, uh, buying participation to improve, if at all, I uh, uh, was to see a sustainable upthrust. This data is uh, uploaded daily on my social media account. So if you care to connect with me, you can update yourself on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, friends, the NSE advanced decline ratio, this is uh, the average of all four trading sessions of the week. What you are seeing is that the Nifty barely managed to gain uh, uh, last week at 0.03%, but the uh, advanced decline ratio, which is a leading indicator after price, fell from 3.14 to 0.79 last week. Now, I remember telling you in my previous week's video that 3.14 advanced decline ratio cannot hold. Statistically speaking, the weight of evidence was tilted against it. At 0.79, it's gone from one extreme to the other extreme. Now that tells you that volatility is going to be high. That means for every 100 losers, there were 79 gainers only. Now this talks of very poor buying conviction on an intraday basis by one marshmallow traders. The marshmallow trading theory 
is explained in a video uh, a description to which is uh, in uh, the hyperlink to which is in the description below as well as in the pinned comment below. So I want the advanced decline ratio to rise with prices. This again on a daily basis is updated on my social media accounts. Now friends, I come to the prompt month uh, basis. Basis is nothing but the premium or discount uh, enjoyed by the uh, uh, Nifty and the Bank Nifty or any uh, FNO security for that matter over spot. As long as the basis is positive, traders are willing to pay a premium to go long. Shorts, of course, are happy to short at higher basis because uh, uh, they are getting a mark up. Now, I told you uh, two weeks ago that the uh, uh, huge basis that we saw after expiry was unlikely to last and see how it's come off. Now, the one noticeable thing here is that the nifty basis shown as a blue line has actually risen up by 25 basis points, which means there was short covering at the lower levels. But the bank nifty basis has actually fallen on a week on week uh, uh, time frame uh, uh, basis. So that tells you that there was unwinding in the bank nifty at higher levels. As long as the basis is positive, which means the futures are trading above spot, I think bulls are doing fine. Now, friends, I come to our in-house indicator, the impetus which you've trusted for almost four years in a row now. And what we are seeing is that both the Nifty and the Bank Nifty have risen last week, managed to rise rather last week with very poor impetus. Impetus raisings have fallen, which means the thrust, the velocity, the momentum was kind of weak. Now, that tells you that uh, there is some amount of nervousness in the market. Ideally speaking, the prices and the impetus should continue to rise together for a sustainable bull market. Here again, this is a weekly chart, but the daily numbers are updated on our social media accounts. Friends, I now come to our uh, uh, in-house indicator, the lift weight thrust drag the indicator. You won't find this just like uh, the impetus. You won't find it anywhere else on the internet. Now, the uh, nifty log smaller gains, as you can see on the blue line, but the LWTD actually went up from the prior week at 0 0.26 to 0 0.39 last week. What does it tell you? Remember the, the uh, tutorial video that I've uploaded on our YouTube channel of how to interpret our indicators. The LWTD tutorial along with the marshmallow theory tutorial is given to you in the description below this video as well as in the pinned comment below. Now when impetus is rising and market is falling, it tells you that there is a good probability that there would be short covering at lower levels and uh, uh, that would cushion the declines. But for a prolonged and a sustainable up move to new highs, it's not short covering that takes markets to new highs. It is fresh buying. So I would want indications of fresh buying coming in. Now here again, the LWTD, this is a weekly chart. The daily chart is on our social media accounts updated every day. Friends, our in-house indicators done. I now come to the bond market, which is very close to my heart. And I have been covering bonds ahead of equities for many, many years now. I have been telling you in my detailed uh, free Telegram posts, and that is one uh, place on my social media accounts where I post everything on a single platform. My contact coordinates come at the fag end of this video. Do take the time out to connect with me over there because there are no word count limits compared to Twitter, etc. So I'm a little more easier writing detailed analysis on our Telegram channel. I've been telling you that I do not buy the uh, transitionary uh, inflation hypothesis. I do not buy the uh, super cycle theory in commodities and I do not buy lower rates theory since the last two years. So rates might have been cut, but they are headed higher. Now here, what you're seeing is Indian 10-year benchmark bond yields have risen to 7.18%. And this is a second consecutive week of a rally, as you can see on the weekly chart. What you are seeing is falling bond prices, which is why yields are rising. Now when bonds are falling, the market is expecting A, inflation to go up, B, the governments to borrow more money via the bond market, which the government has said. As a matter of fact, the RBI said we will be basically borrowing 7,50,000 crores via the bond market from 1st April 2024 to 30th September 2024. The bond market is basically telling you that we expect 
the check writers to demand and possibly even get higher interest rates on these bonds that the government is issuing, which is why bond prices are following. That's a negative trigger for banking stocks, the bank nifty in particular. The reason why the banking stocks, it's a negative trigger is because banks are the biggest investors in bonds. When yields are going up and bond prices are coming down, there's a mark to market loss worth hundreds of crores in the entire banking space. So why is the market going up? Why is, why is the bank nifty going up? Hey, I explained to you my, uh, in my earlier video. In pre-election times, markets are boosted up and with 33.53% weightage, this is the biggest sector in the nifty. The second highest sector, which is the information technology or IT stocks, don't have even 50% of the weightage that nifty, uh, the, the banking and uh, financial sector stocks enjoy. So either ways, you can't have a rally without banking and financial sector stocks. So uh, the underlying triggers may be appearing weak, but the stocks are still rising. This is election magic. And we've gotten out of four guild funds that uh, we invested in on 14th of December, uh, as I recommended them on my Telegram channel. We got out of them three weeks ago. Look at how they've collapsed. I have updated uh, uh, on our Telegram channel a detailed report about how these uh, NAVs have simply collapsed to uh, multi-week lows. We happened to get in at near uh, a swing low and we got out near a top. Now that is the kind of work that we do with our statistical trading models in-house. Friends, the bond market's done. I now come to the bank nifty and as you can see on the daily chart on your screen, the uh, index has uh, uh, basically gained on uh, three out of four trading sessions and in the bargain gained 0.03%. And uh, what you saw on uh, 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 Wednesday was a hammer at the top, which indicates near-term resistance, a mild near-term resistance at 49,057, 49,057. Now that's a hurdle to watch out for in the absolute near term for uh, a daily or weekly time frame traders. Price is above its month long moving average and the moving average itself is currently poised higher. And uh, 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 the moving average will offer support in case of declines currently at 47,720 levels, give or take a little. Do note that this moving average will uh, uh, change with every passing uh, trading session because it will average out the last 20 days. Now, this 47,720 levels is a near-term support at this point in time. Like I said, it will keep changing. Moving on to the weekly chart, we see an inverted hammer on uh, uh, our weekly chart that tells you that uh, 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 higher levels could not sustain. There was selling pressure and the closing of the week is in the lower end of the weekly range. This kind of a hammer where the closing is at uh, the lower end of the week uh, along with the opening is called uh, rough and ready. It's a, a rough and ready gravestone doji. And the word gravestone, as you can imagine, cannot really be good news. Is it uh, by itself a selling signal? No, you need confirmation. So either the market uh, trade sustainably below last week's low, in which case the bears might uh, come out there and short and uh, push prices lower a little, or Prices go above the 49.057, which is a weekly high, and all is well again for the bulls. Now, the weekly chart is above its six-month-long moving average, and uh, uh, therefore, the medium-term outlook is positive for now. Technicals won't really matter in the weeks ahead, because um, uh, especially the six or seven weeks, because markets are, uh, are going to be driven by sentiments uh, related with uh, elections, uh, general elections that are beginning on 19th of April. Friends, in the week before last, this index uh, uh, was number three on our uh, most volatile counters list as per statistical beta rankings that we maintain in-house. It fell number no one notch to number four. That's a relief. Lower uh, uh, volatility is always a welcome step. Last week, I advocated an estimated range uh, between 49,875 on the upside and 47,125 on the downside, which held perfectly well. The coming week is likely to see a range between 49,875 on the upside and 47,250 on the downside, which is very close to the previous week's range because the Nifty itself has made very small uh, uh, moves uh, on a week-on-week -week basis. 
Friends, please also monitor the daily, weekly and uh, monthly uh, pivot points, uh, pivot tables that uh, we update on our Telegram channel without fail. That will help you pinpoint your trades even further. Friends, the Nifty, uh, the bank Nifty done. I now come to the Nifty 50 and as you can see on the daily chart on your screen, it rose on two out of four trading sessions. The 27,768 high of Tuesday is the immediate hurdle to watch out for. The price is above its month long moving average, which itself is moving higher. And it's currently poised at 22,381 level, which is the uh, 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 close to the Fibonacci 261.8% uh, extension at 22,200. So around 22,200, I would expect bulls to come out and defend in case the market falls. But if they are unable to defend this level, then there could be further downsides. The weekly chart on your screen shows an inverted bearish hammer, which is exactly uh, uh, what we saw on uh, uh, the bank nifty chart as well earlier. Now, uh, coming after a, a, a long leg doji of uh, the prior week, it shows bulls will need to push hard to boost the markets higher from here. The price itself is above a six month long moving average. So the medium term outlook also remains positive as of now. Friends, in the week before last, this uh, index was number 13 on our most volatile counters list as per statistical beta rankings that I maintain in-house. It slipped seven notches to number 20, which is a welcome sign because lower volatility is uh, uh, good and uh, uh, the retail trader can therefore kind of make do with the trades that much more easier. Last week, we saw an estimated range between 23,000 on the upside and 22,025 on the downside, which held perfectly well. In the coming week, I estimate a range between 23,000 on the upside and 22,050 on the downside. Here again, there is very little change because do remember the uh, Nifty itself has changed 0.03% on a week on week basis. Also, please friends, uh, watch our uh, daily, weekly and monthly pivots on our free Telegram channel. That will help you time your trades even better. Friends, I now come to the last bit of statistical analysis wherein I gauge the retail risk appetite by way of the turnover contribution of the four segments in the derivative space. On your screen right now is uh, the weekly chart of uh, the uh, contribution of the four segments of the market. What you are seeing is uh, index futures turnover, which is indicated as a blue line. Uh, remaining uh, margin is a flat with a marginal downside, a decimal downside. Stock futures turnover went up 0.07%, which is indicated as a red line. Index options saw a decline in turnover at 0. by 0.61%, which is indicated as a green line. And stock options turnover went up by 0.55%, which is indicated as a purple line. Now the risk appetite was marginally, very marginally improved over the previous week, but it still remains uh, under the desired levels. And do remember, last week the turnover was very poor. So on poor turnover, if there is a, a marginal improvement, that tells you that the base effect is extremely small. That calls for higher volatility. Friends, I now come to my strategy for the coming week ahead. I will continue to focus on public sector units, especially oil marketing companies in particular. The uh, threat of Iran entering the war uh, by uh, uh, attacks on Israel will particularly uh, impact uh, oil marketing company and other uh, uh, upstream and downstream oil companies, energy companies more uh, because of the underlying uh, uh, fear uh, factor. The importance of Iran in uh, uh, your uh, trading metrics where oil is concerned is something I wrote uh, many, many months ago for money control. The hyperlink to that article is also in the description and in the pinned comment below. Do read that article please. Now I expect spreads likely to get wider both the horizontal and vertical spreads which means I will have to I have no choice I will have to cut down on traded exposure possibly and futures volume may shrink and expand along with uh, uh, sentiments and news uh, emanating from the electoral front. This will add to the froth and ingress and egress which means uh, trade entry and exit may not be very smooth. The uh, threat of Iranian attacks uh, uh, on Israel are pumping up uh, oil prices temporarily. 
and I do feel uh, that um, gas is appearing relatively subdued. It's not moving much. And overall, I still remain unconvinced about the oil and gas uh, uh, prices uh, uh, being in a bullish uh, orbit. So I will change my strategy a little bit with uh, allowance for a little bit of uh, wriggle room for prices to go up a little. My overall uh, 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 game plan of seeking uh, theta decay uh, opportunities and uh, uh, linear uh, short opportunities remains in place. On the guilt fronts, I'm in no hurry to re-enter guilt funds which we uh, exited and I might just go uh, uh, into sovereign 10 year benchmark bond yields if and only if the yields cross 7.60%. Remember, we've been laddering these bonds since 2021, end of 2021. And we've laddered all the way up from 7.25 to 7.60%. So now further laddering, uh, logically speaking, has to come only above the last laddering level at 7.60% only. But that appears frankly to be a stretch. From 7.18 to 7.6, what it will take is a real trigger of bad news in the market to take the Indian benchmark yields up. But I'm just saying, at 7.6 and higher, I am an eager investor in 10-year sovereign uh, benchmark bonds. I hope my online family took my advice uh, in my uh, last week's video and saturated their 1,50,000 per uh, individual uh, limit in uh, public provident fund investments uh, before the 5th of uh, April 2023 and got the entire year's tax-free returns locked into your account with 100% sovereign guarantee plus ATC uh, tax benefit plus EEE, exempt, exempt, exempt. That means at the time of investment, at the time of interest payout and at the time of ultimate withdrawal of money from the PPF account, no taxes to be paid. And you must also have by now maxed out on your post office MIS or monthly income scheme, which was raised uh, 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 last year from four and a half lakh rupees and per individual and nine lakh rupees in a joint account to nine lakh rupees per individual and 15 lakh rupees uh, per joint account. Although why this uh, 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 kind of injustice uh, from my point of view, if an uh, individual account is 9 lakh, a joint account should be 18 lakhs. But hey, I don't know why the government has cut uh, 3 lakh rupees from uh, people like me who would want to invest more because do remember the post office is also a sovereign guarantee. And uh, the kind of yield that they are giving is mouth watering. Why? Because it's 7.4% per annum payable to you every month. Believe me, there is no greater joy than you getting an SMS on the 6th of every month saying ping your interest on the MIS account. Monthly income scheme has been credited to your post office saving account. And the other uh, aspect is uh, you must have also maxed out on uh, your SCSS. Those of my online family members who are watching this video and are above 60 years of age, you're getting uh, senior citizen saving schemes wherein you can uh, put a maximum of 3 million, 30 lakh rupees one time in one single account and get 8.2% interest per annum payable to you every quarter. Now that's as mouthwatering as it can get. And yes, there's a sovereign guarantee involved there. So the president of India is guaranteeing your funds here. Also do remember that uh, even though the MIS and uh, SCSS uh, interest uh, uh, may be taxable, there's no TDS involved here. All right. So you get comfort if you're uh, below the uh, tax limits. You don't even uh, have to uh, basically submit uh, a tax exemption certificate form 15H or uh, whatever. Friends, if there are any more ideas that uh, warranty your attention, that uh, wants me, makes me reach out to my online family, I will always update it first, foremost and always on my free Telegram channel. Do make it a point to connect with me there, please. My contact coordinates come at the fag end of this video. Before I sign off from this account, from this video, uh, humble reminder to subscribe to my YouTube channel, channel if you haven't uh, already. Click on the bell icon to receive instant alerts about fresh videos being put up out here. In the comment segment, do let me know what you think about my video and our work and how we can help you become even better traders. Also a request, please help us to reach out to a wider audience 
by recommending and referring these videos to your friends and family and smart traders like yourselves. Thank you for your patience and being with me in this video till we meet again in my next. This is Vijay Bambwani signing off for now. Do have a very, very profitable weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.